Hello and welcome to Easy Science Experiments. Today, we're answering the question, how hot is hot ice? But first, for those of you who've never heard of hot ice before, allow me to introduce you to it. Hot ice is one of those classic science demonstrations that never gets old. Watching liquid freeze in a matter of seconds before your own eyes is really a sight to behold. The thing that makes hot ice extra interesting is that when it freezes, it actually gets hot, hence the name, hot ice. Let's start by answering the question, what is hot ice? The chemical name of hot ice is sodium acetate trihydrate. While it sounds like an exotic chemical, it is actually an ingredient in some foods. So you may have actually ingested sodium acetate at some point in your life. Sodium diacetate is actually an ingredient in this packet of salt and vinegar chips, and it gives them their characteristic flavor. Sodium acetate also has other applications in the textile industry, concrete manufacturing, and creating buffer solutions in the laboratories, to name a few. You can actually make sodium acetate trihydrate quite easily at home by reacting sodium hydrogen carbonate and acetic acid. In other words, you can react baking soda and vinegar to make sodium acetate trihydrate. To create the hot ice in this video, I simply bought some sodium acetate trihydrate from Amazon. I decided to buy the chemical rather than to create it by reacting vinegar and baking soda because the cost is similar and buying the chemical is less effort and ensured that I did not have any impurities in my solution. If you want to try this experiment yourself, there's a link to where I bought the sodium acetate in the description below. Sodium acetate is a salt with one sodium ion, which is represented here by the purple ball, two oxygen atoms represented here by the red balls, two carbon atoms represented by the gray balls, and three hydrogen atoms represented by the white balls. Now this is the anhydrous form of sodium acetate. Anhydrous means no water, and the term is used in chemistry to refer to substances which contain no water. We want the hydrous form of sodium acetate, called sodium acetate trihydrate. The only difference between the two is the hydrous form has three water molecules loosely bonded to the sodium acetate. Here I have some solid sodium acetate trihydrate, and I'm going to prepare it for the hot ice demonstration simply by heating it up. Once all the sodium acetate trihydrate is liquid, you can transfer it to a clean container to cool. I cover the flask with cling film to prevent dust from causing the solution to crystallize prematurely. Pro tip, if you want to cool the solution down quickly, place the container in a cold water bath. Once the solution has reached room temperature, it is ready to be used. Let's first look at how the solution behaves. In the following demonstration, the temperature of the solution is roughly 24 degrees Celsius. I have a sheet of clink film spread across the work surface to make cleanup easier. I also sprinkled some solid crystals of sodium acetate trihydrate to act as nucleation sites. As I pour the supercooled solution of sodium acetate, you can see that it crystallizes as soon as it touches the solid crystals of sodium acetate. The process is very fast because the solution doesn't want to be liquid at such a low temperature, but it needs something to kickstart the process. Here we use solid crystals of sodium acetate to trigger the crystallization in the solution. As the solution changes from a liquid to a solid, it releases energy in the form of heat. This is true in general. Any state change from a liquid to a solid is exothermic, since we're going from a less ordered state to a more ordered state. The hot ice demonstration just makes this very apparent. How hot does hot ice get? It actually gets pretty hot. During my experimentation, I recorded temperatures of roughly 54 degrees Celsius, which is 129 degrees Fahrenheit. Water at the temperature of 54 degrees Celsius can cause deep burns in just 30 seconds. Now, I would not recommend you trying what you're about to see at home, but I tried sticking my hand in hot ice to see how hot it really felt. Now we know that a crystal of sodium acetate will act as a nucleation site and trigger the crystallization of a supercooled solution of sodium acetate. The nucleation site allows for the first step in the formation of the crystalline structure. In hand warmers, which contain sodium acetate trihydrate, a metal disc is often used, which can be pressed to kickstart the formation of crystals. But I wanna know, and you probably do too, what else can serve as a nucleation site and trigger the crystallization process of a supercooled, supersaturated solution of sodium acetate. My first thought when this question came to me was that table salt, also known as sodium chloride, may be a good candidate. The table salt didn't trigger the reaction. Then I tried wood. I thought the rough surface of a toothpick would work well. It didn't. I also tried to trigger the crystallization process using a piece of ice. That didn't work either. 
Now, I didn't try to trigger the crystallization with any other substances, but I would hypothesize, if you were to try this for a science fair project, for example, that substances with a similar structure to the crystalline structure of sodium acetate may trigger the reaction. If you want to find out more about hot ice or any other experiments, check out the website, easysciencexperiments.com. If you have any questions, leave a comment below this video, or if you tried out the experiment, let me know how it went in the comments below.